We haven't covered this dickhead in a long while. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you uh, Rusty Trombone himself, um, uh, Bustle Rand, um, the uh, hippie Alex Jones, the uh, rock star Jim Jones, uh, one of the Jones boys. And this, it, like I have to say, <laughs> um, and and I'm, I reserve the right because it's a holiday weekend to bail out on this stuff. But I, I'd like to show you that this is, look at the title of this. Shit, you scared yet? Look how this asshole is just, like everything, this doom sprayer just is non-fucking stop. One of the recommendations quietly coming out of the B20 and G20 summits was the promotion of vaccine passports for future pandemic response, whether it's uh, to aid partial free movement for us or to curb free movement for migrants. Digital passports are a solution to our problems. Thanks, G20. So um, the idea is that Russell thinks we already live in China as it stands right now. And the conversation about how you need to get your shots if you're traveling from some countries to others, which you already do with some diseases um, in some countries, trying to make it ubiquitous in the EU because they are a, the European Union. And since you can drive you know, with your passport in between all these countries, if one country is more lax than another, and the and one you know they they got to come to a consensus about what the standard will be. So, but shit, you scared yet is the title of this one. Whether it's concern that you'll be able to travel during the next inevitable lockdown or prevent also not inevitable a migrant crisis, digital IDs appear to be suggested for the near future. All right. First of all, white supremacist hand gestures, not surprising at all. I'm kidding. But also, um, this is getting dangerously into the uh, the Don Jr. territory of, of gestures. Thanks, G20. At least we can rely on political opposition to represent an alternative case. There is no opposition. Yes, no one in the G20 is discussing the pros and cons of it. I'm sure it's, they're just handing them out. It's already been decided. What a fantastic story we have for you today. Oh. Yes, I, I understand that it's such a good story. You don't have to flail around to get attention in the clickbait uh, video that will start rolling the minute somebody scrolls over this. At the G20, which amounts to little more than a conference of state leaders and business interests coming together to navigate, control the future, to prevent any alternative voices emerging. And yeah, that's not what the G20 is for. It, honestly, this fucking Illuminati bullshit about the G20 is so annoying. Grow the fuck up. If you have an organization like that, they're not meeting in the open ever. These are countries. These are, and they're the elected representatives of a lot of these countries. The G20 in particular, there's a couple of countries like China um, that uh, how they pick their leaders is suspect. The rest of them are regular democratic process. And those people change every time. So they have to keep getting together to see what they can agree with each other on, on a baseline. To ensure that their interests continue to be met, primarily by removing all their opposition and creating one immutable, homogenized narrative. This was said. Yeah. That's not at all what fucking happened. He does realize China's part of the G20, right? About digital IDs and the inevitability of another pandemic. You can't because people travel and life is gooey, you dumb fuck. Don't have another pandemic, you've only just used the last one. So let's have a digital health certificate acknowledged by WHO. I don't want a digital health certificate. How will I know it's legit and sanctioned? It's been acknowledged by the WHO. Good, good. After the horror of- God damn, the editing on this is fucking nuts. But also, notice how this guy is bringing up this thing as a suggestion. We see one sentence where this guy is bringing this up. Is there a shot? Can we at least have a shot of everyone going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like the, everybody on the dais and everybody in the audience is absolutely ready to sign off on this. The last pandemic has begun to subside. We are already again discussing the necessity for digital ID. Because millions of people died, you dumb fuck. Everybody's trying to figure out how to have an interconnected world where people can travel pretty goddamn freely without having super spreader events. There are going to be underreactions and there are going to be overreactions. 
because there is no silver bullet. Have you noticed that the conditions for digital ID are already being introduced? Have you noticed often when in a supermarket your face is being filmed and observed so that your facial recognition, potential fingerprint recognition are all being collated? Have you noticed? No, they aren't. I mean, the, like, look, the UK has more cameras, you know, per square mile than any other country in the world, but they're kind of small comparatively, so that's why. And again, this asshole thinks that the footage he's seen of the CCP facial tracking software that's fucking everywhere is must be happening everywhere. Is that this time digital ID is being mooted in an interesting way. One, it will be good for future pandemics. Oh, no one likes a pandemic and no one likes being locked down, but also to control immigration. Almost as if they've understood the entire Dude, you do realize we have passports, right? And people have been faking passports. And you have to arrest people who have fake passports. And then we now go through immigration that's modern and matched. And the idea is, are you really you? Who the fuck are you? There's, we've always had some system of that. It's just gotten better over time. For Christ's sake. That's, that's just life. You create a system. Criminals and fraudsters find a way around that system. You improve said system to get her, to stop those folks that's never going to end until there's some sort of like until we're all like you know there's a laser that scans our dna and goes yep that's really you our political spectrum and I'm sure what are somebody's asking what are those patches well first of all one the one on his right arm is falling off and two nothing they're all just for show they have no meaning this is a $1200 farm shirt that wherever you are on that spectrum digital id is good for you in one way or another you could be right wing you could be left wing we're gonna monitor you and control you whoever the fuck you think again I, I, the monitoring controlling part as opposed to just identifying you at a border or or when you're trying to get on a fucking airplane or something is wholly different this is you can understand in some ways how the Alex Jones crowd and the right-wingers that follow him get locked into this hole. We can't have a universal ID card in the United States because that's the mark of the beast. They literally don't want us, all the people who say we, we need photo ID for voting, they, we could have one. There were several bills over the last few decades where there would be like a universal um, identification card. You can get a driver's license for a state if you want to, but you would get a government ID from the federal government like uh, that's akin to a modernization of the social security card just has your picture attached to it or some other way of identifying you one fingerprint something like that so that you can make sure you're really who you say you are no one else can take your benefits or no one else can you know steal your identity and and as people have gotten better at stealing identities then the necessity to find a, a more foolproof way of establishing identity has become increasingly important but the reason we can't have a nationwide ID is because fuckheads like Alex Jones think that this it's the mark of the beast. That the that the devil wants everyone to have to have uh you know an ID to I, I, for everything. And this this is the same thought pattern. Same thing. Well, because we don't care. There ain't no wings no more. There's just the central All right, and this is the whole like t you know uh Two pairs of, you know, two legs in the same pair of pants bullshit. Force. And if you think there ain't no centralizing force or no narrative to introduce one, have a look at Macron right now. Are you on the US and the Chinese side? Because now, progressively, a lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake. Even for both the US and China. This is from a smaller country that would like to have more of a say in the world. Of course, Macron is saying this. And, and of course, the EU member states are saying this because they all have disparate voices. They're not as unified as they think they are. And the two biggest economic powers in the world that are part of this tug and pay are, play are the US and China. China isn't going to be a factor at all in a matter of five years. And EU is going to look for other places to partner with. And the multipolar world will emerge within Europe and the United States largely because of mutual respect, not because of financial ar you know, arm wrestling. We need a single global order. Let me give you a little bit more back. And what he means, by the way, is one that doesn't favor either. 
background on this story that I painstakingly researched on my own without any help. After Joe Biden returned from Bali, the White House released the G20 leader's declaration which contained a clause suggesting signatories had agreed to facilitate seamless international travel. What do you mean, by the way, by seamless? We mean digital ID. That's what we fucking mean. Mm-hmm. Um, well, a standardized system for countries that trust each other with uh, corresponding law and order systems or rules of law where where you can expect a certain level of uh, behavior or or sort of legal understanding state to state, country to country, that will be seamless. It won't be from countries that have Sharia law or have a system like the Chinese or the North Koreans have where you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Um, but the countries that have um, the, you know, the, the baseline jurisprudence laws that we have in the United States are similar to it, like Canada and other states. You'll be able to move intermittently or like indistinguishably in between those countries like you do in the EU. And by the way, this is a big part of the EU where they drive back and forth. And the idea is that you should be able to do those countries. Those sh countries should be able to come to the United States s relatively seamlessly. And by the way, you kind of do. Like, it's not a huge deal. Like, you're not, we're not sitting in like... In, during the Roman times, when a ship showed up and you guys had to sit, people had to sit in a boat for 30 days in quarantine. Um, it was 40 days, actually, which is where the word comes from, quarantine, as in quattro. To facilitate seamless international travel, countries should build on the success of proof of vaccination. So G20 promotes vaccine passports for future pandemic response. Source, the sociable. By the way, um, if you'll notice, the... Um, they're quoting from different sections of this. ...and digital COVID-19 certificates. Right. Let's build on that success. Remember the last couple of years? What do you mean? All that success? Yeah, you know, that success where you couldn't go and watch your nan die. You know, that success where your small business failed. You know, that success where the richest interests in the world became inconceivably more powerful and we entered into a night... No, they didn't. Uh, actually, the companies that got ahead were either companies that could work from home, largely tech companies, and delivery companies like Amazon. They expanded. They're contracting now. Amazon's having to lay off 10,000 workers. Inconceivably. Why? Because people are going shopping again. Because there's a fuck. Because I went to the store today and there was a, a line of cars a mile and a half long to get in the Target parking lot. Hellscape. Yeah, the success. What about and it? And by the way, this asshole's never had anything close to a hellscape in his life. He, like, again, he lives in a, he shoots this show in a reconstruction of a room in his house. Should we build on it? If you have been vaccinated or tested properly, then you can move around. Have you been vaccinated? Yeah. Have you been tested properly? What do you mean properly? Mm, exactly. So for the next pandemic, instead of stopping the movement of the people 100%, which clogged the economy globally, you know, you can still provide some movement of the people. You can provide some movement of the people as long as you blindly cooperate with our centralized edicts on the heels of the business 20. Again, <sighs> notice how he takes this one guy's statements about this. This is not the, un this is not the accepted position of the G20 at all. Um, this is how some countries choose to run and others are not going to buy in at all going forward. And that's why you have a meeting. But secondly, you'll notice how they slice up different parts of this and slap it together to make their own narrative about this. But, you know, Russell did his own study. this play silly thing why is it not playing i don't know hold on one second back to me and then i'll restart my page where was he uh, this is at 342 okay i've got a, i hate this i don't know what's causing this i think i've got an update or something it's black friday it's slowing down the entire internet um let's see i'll reload this page See if that does it. Hold on one second. Whoops. Here we go. Nope. 
Just being weird. Dirt, dirt. See, just sticks. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm walking here. Uh, hold on. Let me close this. Let me close this. See if this helps. I think I'm going to have to um, quit Safari and reopen it. Hold on. Just how it works. I think it's just being odd. Okay. Uh, where am I? Windows history. There we go. Go back up to this one. Your browser can't please. Oh, that's weird. Must have gotten pulled. Huh. I think this might be an issue. Hold on. Um, force quit. Yes. And then I'm going to... This might be... I think there might be a security update because there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, um, the, the, the lovely folks at... Um, you know, who are buying and selling things this holiday season. Um, that's Firefox. Okay, I'm going to have to look in here. Chrome. There we go. Um, see if another website will open it. If not, I might have to cut it early. Apologies if it uh, gets weird like that. Um, got it here. There we go. Bring this over here. Take this over here. Da 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 da. Back here. Okay. Um, if I may. Beg your pardon. Uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm just fixing something. There we go. Um, let's see. Hold on. Never mind. Yeah. YouTube. And go to history. I'll find it. Uh-huh. And... Which by, the, ah, which, by the way, shouldn't it? All right, here we go. And now we go to theater mode, and then I fixed it. All it takes is a couple seconds, and then I can solve all this stuff on my own. Um, Exist. We've already got Imagine if I had a staff. G20, what should it be, 20? How much more esoteric do these 20s need to get? Is it just going to be Illuminati 20 within a couple of weeks? B20. By the way, exactly what I'm talking about. Like, he thinks anybody who gets together is trying to set fire to the world, whatever. And I, like, the, the, the sort of, like, he's this close to, to calling it demonic, like Alex Jones does, I'm telling you. 20 summit in Bali, where the Indonesian health minister called for a digital health certificate using WHO standards, the G20 called for international collaboration to capitalize on the success of digital COVID-19 certificates for future pandemic response. Yes. By the way, none of it involved, um, except for China, arguably, um, isolating people or locking down people based on their status. It was all requests, but it was how people could know if they'd been infected or if they were they were carrying it or if they'd been vaccinated. So they knew, you know, whether or not, like if you go to the hospital and you're having symptoms of something and you go, but I've been vaccinated for COVID. And they're like, okay, we tested you. You don't have COVID. It's this. That helps save your life responses there's not a global conspiracy there's just international collaboration do you think that the words global conspiracy and international collaboration could be used to describe the same thing it's yes by an asshole because uh, honestly this prick is like uh, any any global ch climate change efforts international conspiracy see what i mean again like it when you actually don't have to show anything for your work, when your entire job is just muckraking bullshit, you can get away with this as an argument. It's not a reptilian overlord. It's a lizard-like emperor. See what I mean? Like, I mean, we're, like, it's... 
I, I like. I feel like he's going to have David Icon apologizing to him in a couple of weeks. According to the 132-page B20 Indonesia 2022 final communique, policy recommendations to the G20 member countries should promote further exchanges in strategic use and sharing of science, technology, and appropriate data for crisis detection, creating global coordination framework for future crisis mitigation. Now that's a very very complicated sentence to. Gee, apparently the sentence you said was complicated. They wouldn't have had to cut it down. Jesus Christ, what is with the editing? I've said, uh, but perhaps the most relevant word is appropriate. Because appropriate means they could do whatever they bloody well want to do with all of the other words, like science, tech. No, it doesn't. It means different countries will take that distinctly different from each other. And so having an overarching sort of global thumb that pushes the scale down won't work. People will take appropriate measures deter like based on what their populations will either uh, acquiesce to or want. Technology, mitigation, data, ultimately- Yeah, data is a very sketchy word, honestly. I mean, do your own research. What this bureaucratically lubricates our pathway for is more surveillance, more centralized power, greater ability to control a population. Now, mm. I know that we're also, always ushered into these states- Hold on. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. Awareness of a fact is not an attempt to control truth. And I, I, the, it would be, if Russell was a vlogger in a third world country that was on the receiving end of Exxon's uh, malice over the years or or, you know, Coca-Cola or Nestle controlling water in countries and had a belief system that somehow the, the Western governments approve this stuff because they just want the profits or whatever, because you're on the receiving end of this damage. You're kind of, uh, it's understandable that you would think that malice was all the way up the chain. It'd be one thing. But Russell lives an, an incredibly privileged and cush fucking life. There are no... Insofar as I know, there are no days in Russell's life where he serves soup at a soup kitchen. Not a one. No, there are no days where he actually interacts with people in person that say the kind of things that he's talking about back to him. Because he would excuse himself and fuck off. Because, again, this, the, one of the goals of the doomers is to make people give up. Because once the, once the fix is in at that scale, what the fuck can any individual or even small group of people do? What do you, and unless you're going to form a giant hacker collective and, and find out at some point, like the end of I Am Legend, that you're actually the bad guy. You've been shutting down hospitals to show them you mean business. And then you're like, oh, fuck, this is, this, I'm exactly what they were you know, ratcheting things up about I've caused more problems that I feared. Unless you're ready to, you know, to engage in something, you're not going to do anything on a scale when it's, you know, two sets of 20 countries getting together to Illuminati their way through your fucking life. The promise of convenience and safety, but are you beginning to suspect that this convenience and safety is coming at an incredible price? And no, because Russell Brand lives a life of complete convenience and complete fucking safety. This goes beyond just him being a dick. This is... This is... Like... The disdain... That this shows in his... Belief about how other people live... Uh, is... Astounding. This is the amount, just this is so fucking condescending at its root. And, it, and the idea that you would kind of play cute or half cute with Doom, and again, I, like it, once you start selling shit, I don't believe it. If you think the world, like the world's gonna end tomorrow, buy my new end of the world kit, all right, you don't actually believe that because. Once that person buy, you'd be giving the kits away for free, for one, if you really believe the world was ending. And secondarily, because you, where the fuck are you going to spend the money from, that you're getting from the kit? 
to buy more kits when the world doesn't end tomorrow. And that the ultimate beneficiaries are not you and I with all of our convenience and safety. Mm -hmm. but look, look at him looking at his producer when he says convenience and safety, because he knows too. Centralized forces that are able to make incredible profits and control outcomes in a wide variety of situations. Dude, that's your YouTube channel. I mean, this is a highly profitable endeavor involved in a political and this is he's a fear farmer. And it's and I got it's even beyond that because it's automated largely. So he's like he's got one of these he's the big agribusiness of fear farming or sociological. Despite the knowledge of transmissibility being publicly available, both the B20 and G20 are still recommending proof of vaccination as a means to travel in the event of a future pandemic. You would be perhaps less concerned about these global decrees being introduced if you thought that your own nation's political, parliamentary or congressional democracy could provide a system of healthy debate and that your media would report on all sides. What he means is, uh, if half the people don't believe it's a pandemic while it's becoming a pandemic, they would let the people who are traveling, who might bring the disease into the country, travel in because the people who don't believe it should have an equal say with the people who know the fact that it is coming. What a dick. Sides of the conversation, leaving you, the free individual, in a position to make a decision based on the information you've gleaned. But uh, you can. Uh, lockdowns and all that kind of stuff didn't happen the way he's the way China is doing them for fucking sure. You still could go out and catch it from people. I mean, Australia and UK were very different, but the United States wasn't like that. If you wanted to have a house party, nobody's going to arrest you for having a fucking house party. Churches got in trouble. Places that were like that were zoned for gatherings in these, you know, temporarily, we're like, yeah, no gatherings because it's bad right now. And especially if your audience is largely old people who are the primary people dying in the early part of this. But as you know, the media have been co-opted and politics has been monopolized. Yeah, it's monopolized. There's, there are no voices. It didn't matter that the Republicans, you know, gained, you know, m a minority majority control of the Congress. It's not going to matter. They're going to say the same things and do the same things. Nothing. There's no difference between anybody. I mean, unless you're a woman or you're gay or you're trans or you're in the military and people who, you know, run the government, you know, make different choices about whether or not you should still be in Afghanistan or not. That, But that's, you got to understand, you're not the important part of the, of the public. You're a, you're a corner issue. You're a, you're a subset according to Russell. The important people are people like Russell, who just want to be left alone to not have to do anything. And if it means half their audience dies at some point, that's just the price the audience pays because I'm rich enough to take care of myself. And if they show up looking for some sort of like, you know, confirmation bias combined with meditation, I mean, and they get a lung disease, I mean, we can all see if ivermectin works. They can just volunteer. Here in Britain, the current opposition party, which is basically the same as the party they're in government, have said that they would not oppose digital ID. And in fact, they would like to present their own ideas on that subject. In <laughs> um, first of all, the idea of digital ID being different than some sort of material version of it. And obviously, eye scans like I do... Um, uh, TSA pre and clear when I travel and clear scans your eyeballs and uh, your fingerprints because you've already been vetted for travel. And so you can go right through and that kind of stuff. Look, if I don't, if I wanted to be, to freely move around without being scanned, a fucking drive. I'm not, it's the convenience that I'm doing all this stuff for. It's not the actual freedom of movement. I can fucking walk. If I want to take a month to get there, I can fucking walk or drive. But I take an airplane, which is a little tube filled with other people that has to be pressurized so we all don't die or, or you know, lose oxygen and become crazy and start strangling each other. And so the pilots don't die and so that nobody can bring on a device that would blow the fucking thing up. Because there's billions of people on the earth and not all of them are well.
In the UK, a Labour government could introduce basic ID cards to help count how many people there are in Britain and reduce illegal immigration. Don't say that it's about controlling the population. Say it's about immigration. They've been all whooped up during Brexit. Do you know what would help you control bloody immigration? ID cards. What about passports? Passports have already got passports. Oh, God, no, a passport is not digital. Well, I sort of use digitally. I mean, you do that thing. No, 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 no. The party is examining... Again, it's the same thing. You would just have it associated with a phone number if you wanted to. The idea of forcing everyone to apply Thank you, Mark. for registration. Oh, sorry. Did, uh, did something happen? Hold on. Sometimes I get a message if something's going. Oh, uh, thank you, Mark, so much for the support. One of the things that irritates me most about all about yourself, all of the discourse and rhetoric about <laughs> you mean the part you ignore tolerance and inclusivity, which I believe are ideas that are fundamental to any fair and functioning society. Bullshit. That everybody should. He's bullshitting you. He, he does not. He believes those are distracting social issues because the lizard people are here. Be free to express themselves as who they are. Of course, assuming that they're not hurting anyone else. That our morale. Well, no. You can't assume they're not hurting anyone else because every time you do that, towers fall and bombs go off and stabbings happen and Ted Bundy lives in Florida for 45 days pretending to be somebody else and is, when he's arrested for a traffic violation, refuses to give his name and lives in a local jail for six days while they try to figure out who the fuck he is and somebody just happens to notice him on the fucking news after he's murdered a bunch of co-eds. And if they just let it slide after a while, we can only hold him for seven days if we don't know who the fuck he is. And we, you know, he's got the freedom to move around as an American citizen. Well, how do we know he's an American citizen? Listen to him. And he's white. Shoo. Morality should not be about judging other people, but about holding ourselves to a higher standard. What Says the doom sprayer. What bothers me most is the way that these ideas are used to mask the fact that behind them lurks totalitarianism. Um, which by the way, this asshole show is based entirely on. I am the voice of here and you just want to be free and I am the person that is your guide. However flawed and magical I may be, but I will use all the gestures you learn in talking class to make sure that you personally do what I say to you. And if everything I'm saying about there being a giant conspiracy behind everything on the whole fucking earth, you know, if that's bothering you and making you upset, I have a meditation course. If you'd like, if you get, if you find yourself getting anxious at the idea that there's basically a giant lizard conspiracy and that every leader of every country is all together, they're the same people. They're just trying to figure out a way to kill you. It's just depopulation and they're all working together. You really can't escape. So really a meditation course is very inexpensive and you only have to drink a little Kool-Aid. The people that expound these ideas most vociferously are people like Justin Trudeau and now a British centre-left counterpart, Keir Starmer. Oh, in order to have a fair and more just society, we're just considering forcing everyone to register for digital ID. Where's your tolerance? Where's... <sighs> you have a social security card in the United States. You, uh, you, are, you have a birth certificate record of citizenship that is digital for most people. Um, nowadays, especially your birth certificate is digitized when you're born anyways, and logged and there's a digital version. There's a digital trail of your existence that starts early on. How, how is this any different? I mean, you, again, this is just the difference between state ID or a federal ID in our case is there's. The only difference is, is that a federal ID is based on your rights as a citizen of the entire country and state IDs can be taken away for a myriad of reasons and held up, uh, you know, to stop you from movement or limiting what you can do in other states. Where's your inclusivity? Well, we're including everyone. We're forcing you. Wait, who the fuck is that guy stealing the wood? To be included. Stephen Kinnett, the shadow immigration minister, revealed that an identity the scheme was being looked at Hold on. very, very carefully the indeed. The shadow immigration leader. From... The shadow immigration leader. Now on will be looked at very, very carefully indeed. Arguing that it would be so helpful in reassuring the public that we have control of our borders. Wow, they just identify what your fear is and then attach that fear to their preferred outcome. What? Or they're trying to solve the problem.
again, this is the assumption. He's making the assumption that right wingers in U in the UK aren't really concerned about immigration. They're just trying to use your fear of immigration to get you to use a digital ID service, either on your phone or through a card you carry with you, which is like any kind of ID you choose to carry with you, or that's you can bring up using a single fingerprint or an eyeball scan because it's really you. Or if we, we're just going to go back to the 1700s where we're like, I think that's Charlie. What can we say to get more power? Just apply that. Are they saying this in order to get more power? Does that Your assumption, his assumption is always that they're trying to get more power. That's the baseline. You couldn't convince him that anything people are doing isn't to get more power. And when you operate on that premise, I can't take any of your fucking arguments seriously because it's all based on that. There is no situation where Russell Brand's going, well, some of the times they're really trying to help. No, anytime the government is involved in, you know, material work, according to Russell Brand, this is simply so that they can control people. It's always a guise. Does that work in this case? Oh, right. Yeah, they feel like if they scare people around immigration, then suggest national ID cards, people will be up for national ID cards. Well, and this is the, and this is him. If he could just suggest that national ID cards are part of a giant conspiracy, that will make people afraid of national ID cards. And then they'll revolt against it. Which they will then use however they fucking want. In an interview with the Radio Times to be broadcast today, he suggested that almost every EU member state had some kind of identity scheme and it can't be beyond the wit of man to devise one for Britain too. Very poetic way of framing it. Can it be beyond the wit of man? Dare we dream even in gentle reverie of a tyrannical Orwellian Big Brother style system? Look how he's pushing in the camera on this shot too. It's just pathetic. Where everything you do is controlled, a cashless society where you are stripped of your soul and your most basic identity. Again, dude, debit cards didn't strip people of their fucking identity. Ugh. This asshole was pro-crypto cashless society. Well, Bitcoin's really, it's called a coin. It's the same thing, isn't it? Till you are essentially a human barcode transacting your way into an early grave. By the way, the, the human barcode is a throw to that uh, 666 is the number of the beast and you won't be able to, you know, buy or sell anything without his mark. It's by John Keats. He claimed that it would deter people from entering Britain illegally as he suggested that Labour would aim to reduce the number of people crossing the channel in small boats to zero. The issue of immigration has long been a contentious one. My only ideal around it is when seeking to change the dynamics of your life, don't look at people that have no power, look at people who have power when thinking about how reality might be altered. In a uh, that is meaningless claptrap. By the way, if a, a, a large group of people from other countries, or especially in the case of, say, China or Iran or Russia or any other country that, that use immigration as a weapon by destroying certain areas, because if they, they know if they destroy this area, that those people will only have one direction they can go, and that is over the border of a country they're trying to uh, undermine, that is the overwhelming force. That is a, a, a force of power. And pretending it isn't is as manipulative as he's assuming this person is. In a July report by the Tony Blair Institute, I've heard that name somewhere, Tony Blair. Yeah, there was a guy with great morals. The Tony Blair Institute recommended introducing universal mandatory digital identity cards to help alleviate the channel migrant crisis. He also wanted to alleviate the Saddam Hussein crisis by going to war with Iraq. But it turns out that the crisis that followed the Saddam Hussein crisis was a much worse one. Tony Blair as long as you're not in Iraq. Blair tried to introduce a scheme like this when he was in power. He still tried to introduce it when he's not in power. I may not be Prime Minister, but I've always got the old Tony Blair Institute. I have to be in charge of that, because it's named after my name. Supporters of ID cards argue that two decades on, the data people readily share with social media sites and private companies has tilted the balance on privacy arguments. Oh my god, they're using the fact that, like numbskulls, we ignorantly share all of our private... By the way, don't forget to click like and subscribe and the notification bell so you can get an email and also sign up for my email list and of course because we're coming to your territory and we want to be able to send out an email blast that's based on your location. Notification bell.
private data. No one ever explained that to me, by the way. Did you know that whenever you were Googling something, all your information was being captured and collated? Yes. I sort of understand it now to watch about 25 documentaries on it. I didn't know that in the first place. I thought when I used Google, I was using Google. I didn't know Google was using me. Now they're saying, well, look, they obviously like doing that. Why don't we, the state, take control of it as well? <laughs> that was an accident. Like if you accidentally treaded dog shit, I don't want the government to come and slap human shit on the underneath of your other foot. It's an odd analogy. Useless. But still. I thought you liked doing that. It's an accident. Of course, the ultimate aim of such a scheme is to introduce those much control, words, much control. A social credit scoring system. Do you think that these ideas will bring us closer or further away from digital tyranny? Well, the alignment of pervasive high-tech gatekeeping with an impulse to police ideological and moral conformity is not only possible, but already beginning to emerge. The declaration of a national emergency in Canada empowered banks to freeze and suspend the accounts of freedom convoy protesters without a court order and while enjoying protection from civil liability. Yeah, uh, those people were blocking uh, large swaths of roads, stopping people from getting to the fucking hospital. They were not engaged in normal protest, which is person to person, individual acts. They were using giant pieces of machinery to shut down parts of cities. They were actually, I would argue, the Freedom Convoy, the ironically named Freedom Convoy people, were using the fact that their job involves a giant piece of machinery against those whose job doesn't involve a giant piece of machinery. There is no situation where striking nurses can fill the streets full of gurneys with old people on them. Them truckers were only a threat to the interests of the powerful. They were not many. No, they were also a threat to anybody trying to get to the fucking hospital. Anybody trying to get to work. Anybody trying to see their family or relatives to society more broadly. They were called Nazis. They were condemned. Bank accounts were frozen. By the way, several of them uh, espouse white supremacist beliefs. That's where that came from. The overall calling of Nazis and Gestapo, that word gets thrown out a lot. This was specific to a couple of these idiots. And secondly, they were using giant pieces of machinery to block streets. Pro a blockade is not a protest. Especially, like I said, when you're between people in the hospital. Frozen, not just, of course, of the truckers, but people that financially supported them. Outrageous and clear example of the way that things are heading. We should not be expedited. No. Again, Canada has not rounded up any individuals with signs for protesting. Canada has not rounded up anybody who's, you know, marched in the street. Even without permits, if you're doing a march, they tend to stand back and let you frigging do it. But if you're going to crash vehicles into the corners of buildings and then uh, put the trailer across the road and then do it with another one and another one and another one and go, that'll show them, and then sleep in the goddamn thing and threaten to fight anybody who tries to move it, that's not the same thing. As a matter of fact, that gives you uh, financial power over any individual who simply has a living that doesn't involve a giant piece of machinery. I don't know why but in our journey down that pathway, we should be truncating it and assessing it. That is precisely the kind of thing one would expect to see become normalized with the imposition of a social credit system. No, um, because it wasn't individual to individual. It was about blockades, not protest. System. Add in facial recognition software that can identify individuals. By the way, plausible dystopia of a social credit system source the week. This is an opinion piece, I'm assuming, that someone wrote. It would be nice to know the person's name and, and not just that The Week, which is a, uh, a barrel edition website that collects stories from The Week, um, that, that, that this is the opinion of the news. Individuals attending dangerous protests and other public events, and we're left with a vision of a near-term future that could look pretty dystopian. Well, at least we're not seeing new protest laws introduced all over the world to prevent people gathering together on the streets to protest these kind of regulations. Well, at least we've got opposition parties that will speak out against this kind also, of legislation. Well, at least these- Hold on. I don't know about the US, I mean about the UK, but the US doesn't have any new uh, rules about gatherings. None. We even had protests during lockdown. We had people, it, the George Floyd protests 
happened during COVID. There was nobody going, well, is COVID out there so we can shut down the George Floyd protests? It didn't happen. And again, there's a difference between rioting and protests, not that, not that this asshole would care. Um, oh. These ideas aren't being conjured up at international conferences where nobody ever votes, supported by powerful financial interests. Oh no, we're fucked, aren't we? It will be a future. No. And again, this is, uh, again, the article is dystopian science fiction. Basically, like somebody's been watching too much Black Mirror. In which cutting edge technological advances combine with some of the oldest and most deeply rooted social inclinations of human beings to produce a new form of illiberalism. It seems to me now. Which is uh, something, illiberalism is something that could define Russell's actual thought form. Now quite clear that what is being presented to us is a discourse around inclusivity, diversity and justice. Meanwhile, in actuality, in regulation, in legislation, in practice. Look at the, look at the jutting forward of the photo, like the, the graphics on this, moving it forward like this to grab you after he said the, the good words, the, the bad words that you're supposed to substitute are given in static succession. It's like, this is like 1984 for dummies. It is through big tech and government power. A new type of tyranny is literally being instantiated. No, it is not. I personally No, they are discussing a new way of passporting people and whether they can have a digital way of being assured that people have their shots if they travel to places where there are huge outbreaks rather than have the entire economy and everybody's life with it grind to a fucking halt. I personally believe that much of the rhetoric around social justice and personal freedoms is bang on correct. People should be free to be who they are sexually, to choose whatever identity they feel. But... It's being used against you because it's really not about those things. I mean, Ginny Thomas means well. She's right about the QAnon things, you know. Comfortable with, and we should decentralize power wherever possible. Says the dude in a monarchy. We do, fuckhead. We live in a federalist system. Under a f we have a federal government and we have state governments. And, and most of the zoning is left up to fucking cities and counties. You can be as traditional and as religious as you like, as progressive and irreligious as you like. Live your life. By the way, why are those two things uh, the distinct differences? Secondly, he doesn't believe those those two things are really separate anyway. However you want to, within the generally accepted reason of not hurting one another, or perhaps even well, it might include the planet. The answer well, to these problems- Well, all right, hold on. Without hurting each other and the planet, would- would spreading a disease accidentally be considered hurting someone in, you know, normal, unsmooth brain world, <laughs> you know, discourse? Those of us that actually our brains are separated into two halves connected by tissue and actually function as a full, you know, as a fully operable organ. Of course it would. So his own caveat itself wipes out his entire fucking argument. I, without hurting yourself or the environment. So according to him, the ESG social credit score stuff about environmental polluters or something would be completely okay as well. What's the definition under, you know, Russell Brand's suggestion that what does hurting the planet mean? Using plastic? How much plastic is behind him beyond the screen? The dude has, instead of a window, he has a TV set there playing a video of a, of a fucking wood shed. Problems is not less democracy and more control for the state and big corporations. It's obviously the exact reverse. Which direction do you think the narrative is trying to take you right now? Okay. Which direction do you think the narrative is trying to take you right now? Let me know in the comments. Um, again, garbage talk means nothing. Vacuous horseshit. We don't spend a lot of, as much time on Russell these days because he's sort of at peaked, he's peaked at relevance and he's, he'll, the, he's had to introduce like live streaming on Rumble and everybody wants to be like me and, uh, to, to keep the thing afloat and build it into something so that it doesn't, you know, fade down. Now, there'll always be a rotating, um, you know, people who want to have the doom spray bukkake all over them. And th th those people are always printed anew 
And, you know, sometimes uh, you, you're you sick of seeing bald Joe Rogan and you want to see uh, here suit Joe Rogan with no muscle mass. But it's, uh, but again, I want to remind everybody, this is, this entire argument isn't actually an argument. This is built entirely on stressing out a certain group of people, making them afraid. And it's, uh, you know, it's a lot like a drug dealer, you know, selling, you know, selling fear and, and anxiety meds at the same time. Let me know in the chat. Fuck you. And he, by the way, he put this comment thing up there, um, which he got the idea from, uh, what's his name? Um, Steven Crowder. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at- I did not. Five of these, and remember, remember to sign up to my mailing list. Turn yeah, let me track you. I didn't realize that when you were using my mailing list, I was using you in my mailing list. And also, click the, the notification- Like, the fact that he ends this fucking video with all this let me track you digitally bullshit is... Completely predictable. That's what it is. Uh, I, like, again... Rusty Trombone is, without a doubt, one of the most predictable pricks we see on here. Um, on that note, by the way, I was going to, I've got like two other videos, but since my system is acting up weird and I got to do radio tomorrow and I still have a little bit of tweaking work to do on that, I hope it's okay. I'm going to bow out and go eat pizza with the family. I love you guys. Um, thanks for sticking in with me. And, and again, part of the reason why I show you the clips that I show you is because these folks want you afraid and, and, and in a state of near paralysis where, well, I don't even know why you try is the attitude. And, and I'm here to tell you, um, there, it's not just that it's not true. It's not just that there's a reason why, um, it, your life has value and direction and your hopes and dreams should have the ability to actually fly again. Um, it's that they don't believe it. There, this asshole is selling you a raft of bullshit that he does not live. None of them do. Like, when Trump tells you we're a nation in decline, uh, moments later he's playing golf. Fucking golf. Nobody plays golf at the end of the world unless you're at the point of like, doesn't matter anyways, might as well play one last round like it's fucking Caddyshack during the thunderstorm. They don't believe it. It's not just that it's false, it's that they know it's false, and they're using it to make people just like, in a sort of a paralysis, like, oh, maybe this guy has the answer. It's fucking terrible. And I won't tolerate it. I love people, and I like, I, 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 I don't like it when they're mistreated. I don't. I want there to be more joy and happiness in the world instead of this crap. And I, and these guys... It's the same fuckers all the time selling the same shit. Anyways, take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. I'll see you guys in the morning for the radio show. I'm going to go have pizza with the family. Uh, love you. Take care of yourself and take care of somebody else. Okay.